So in this video, we're going to be talking about zero and negative exponents. Uh, we have about two more rules to remember when working with exponents. The first one is anything to the zero power is one. Uh, for instance, a to the zero uh, is one. One uh, one thousand three three. Excuse me. One thirty five thousand six seventy eight. It to the power of zero is also one, and then I have this all this gibberish x times y all divided by three times j all raised to the power of zero is one. So anything raised to the power of zero will always be one. Pretty simple. The next one is also simple, but it's usually the one that's probably the most forgotten, um, just because it's I I would almost say it's counterintuitive, but the but it's another easy rule to remember, but it, because it's so easy, it's easy to forget. And this is the way we say it. A to the, uh, any number raised to the negative exponent can be rewritten as one over A to the n power. Or one over A to the negative n power can be rewritten as A to the n power. All right, so what this is basically implying is this one simple rule. We always rewrite negative powers. So let's explain this a little bit easier. So if I give you two raised to the negative two power, I can simply change this entire thing into a fraction and say one over, and then two was my base, and my exponent was negative two, so I'm just gonna write it as a positive two. I rewrote it as a fraction, one over two to the second power, or we can just say one fourth, okay? Now let's give another example of this. Um, let's say I have 13 raised to the negative 14 power, okay? I can rewrite it as a fraction, one over 13, and then just put the 14th power as a positive, okay? And I can do this with anything I want to. I can say uh, z raised to the negative 8 power is equal to 1 over z to the positive 8 power. I've changed it to a fraction. Now, the opposite is true. What if you have a fraction where the exponent is in the, the denominator? We, we can rewrite it as a whole, as a regular numbers here. So let's say I have 2, uh, 1 over 2 to the negative 2. All right. Well, I can just simply rewrite it. What's my base? It's 2. What's my exponent? Negative 2. So I rewrite it as a positive 2. I'm done. So 1 over 2 to the negative 2 is just 2 squared. Or in this case, simply 4. What if I had 1 over 13 to the negative 14? Well, it's the same principle. I'm going to rewrite it to have my base as 13. Uh oh, my pen's dying. Let's see if this works. And my exponent is 14. And then lastly, if I had 1 over z to the negative 8, because it's a fraction, I can rewrite it and say z to the positive 8. All right, so this is a very simple rule, is that we always rewrite negative, exp uh, negative 8 powers. If I have anything like this, where I have a number being raised to a negative exponent, I simply rewrite it as a fraction and put my base in my uh, opposite of my exponent as my denominator. And if I'm opposite is true, if I have a fraction where I have a base and a negative exponent and my denominator, I simply rewrite it where the base comes out and the negative gets op the negative becomes its opposite. All right. And this is almost so easy, it's actually even difficult to explain other than just doing multiple things over and over again. So let's just get to some problems. So for this first one, it says uh, 29 to the zero power. Well, this one's an easy one because anything raised to the zero power, anything raised to a zero exponent will always just be one. All right. Um, t for two, it says 12 to the negative one. Well, I don't like the negative exponent, so I can simply rewrite this as a fraction by saying one over 12 to the one power and just get rid of the negative exponent. All right, now three and four. I'm gonna work three with you and four with you, and sorry for the printer noise background, but 
don't let this compl be complicated to you because it's still following the same rules that we've always done before. When I'm multiplying my powers, I simply add my exponents. So my base will still be 10 because they're the same base, and I'm gonna say negative four plus a negative six. And when I do, I get 10 to the negative 10 power. Now, because I have a negative exponent in this power, I can simply rewrite it as a fraction. 1 over 10 to the 10th power. And I'm done. Okay? Number 4, same concept. Don't overthink this. Let's just go ahead and treat this like a fraction. When I'm multiplying fractions, I always multiply across the numerators first. And I get 1. And then I multiply across the denominators. Well, I have 3 to the negative 3 being multiplied by 3 to the 5th. Well, what do I simply do? I add my exponents. 3 to the negative 3 plus 3 to the 5th. Okay. Well, what's th negative 3 plus 5? Well, that's going to be 1 over 3 squared. Or we can simply say 1 over 9. Because 3 squared is equal to 9. All right, now we're getting to some things that are a little bit tougher. So I have 19x to the negative six. Now we need to understand one simple thing, that this exponent is only affecting the base of x, and that's it. It's not affecting the 19. So when we rewrite this, 19 stays where it is. It doesn't change. However, we are gonna rewrite this as a fraction, and we can rewrite it as x, the sixth power. So this x to the sixth power becomes my denominator. And I'm done. There's nothing else I can really do with this, okay? Because it's telling me to write it as positive exponents. Now let's take a look at this one. Let's, same concept. The bases a are not being affected, or excuse me, the only thing that's being affected by the exponents are the bases a. This 14 is not being affected, so there's nothing we could do with that 14. It needs to stay right where it is. So I'm gonna write 14. And now the other part is, is that this a to the negative fifth is being divided by this a to the negative eight. So I'm gonna simply do like I'm supposed to do. When I divide powers, I'm gonna subtract these exponents. So I'm gonna say a to the negative fifth minus a negative eight. Well, when I simplify this, negative five minus a negative eight, we can really say that a to the negative five plus a positive eight when we rewrite it. Well, what's negative five plus eight? Well, it's three. So we can rewrite this as four to 14 times a to the third power, okay? Now, could we have done this another way? Absolutely. Um, we could have actually have just gotten rid of our negative exponents from off the bat. So just to show you another way that this could be done, we know 14 is going to stay where it is. But this a to the negative 8 is now going to become my numerator. And the a to the negative 5th has to go into my denominator because I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the negative exponents. Well, since they're dividing, that means I'm going to subtract my exponents here. So 8 minus 5 gives me 14a to the third power. Again, same answer, just a different way of doing it. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. All right, so seven. We have a three t to the six times eight t to the negative six. Well, when I'm multiplying like this, I can do it, there's several, again, multiple different ways. I know that my coefficients, my three and my eight are gonna get multiplied. So I can really just kind of work this all the way out. Three times eight, and then I'm gonna be multiplying my exponents together. T to the six times T to the negative six. Notice how I rewrote this thing. Since they're all being multiplied out, I just kind of rewrote it. Well, what's three times eight? Well, that's 24. I have T to the six times T to the negative six. So six minus six. Well. 24 times t to the zero power because six minus six is zero. That's 24 times one because anything raised to the power of zero will always be one, so t zero is one. And this is ultimately 24, all right? So for the next one, I'm gonna actually get me another sheet of paper here and rewrite this so we have some room. So I have 12 
s to the negative 1 times 4 to the negative 2 times r3 all over s squared times r5. All right, so this problem, I can attack it in multiple different ways, but let's say that I just want to get rid of my negative exponents. All right, so I'm gonna notice that all my ex negative exponents happen to be in my numerator, so I can actually rewrite this thing. And I can rewrite it as 12 times r to the third power because they're, these are the only things that have positive exponents all over, well this negative one can be rewritten as s to the one, all right? So I've kind of moved that out the way. And notice that I have an s squared here, so I'm just gonna put that together, all right? So that's been moved. And then I have a four to the negative two power, which I can rewrite as four square. So I've moved that out the way. And then I have, lastly, r to the fifth. Okay, so I've rewrote it. I took all my negative exponents that were in the numerator and I moved them into my denominator. Now I can kind of simplify some things. Well, 12 r to the third, well, that's literally 12 r to the third. Nothing more to do there, just combine them. s to the one times s squared, well, I'm simply gonna add these exponents and I get s to the third power. And four squared happens to be 16, okay? And then this would be r to the fifth, okay? Now, we, could, we can't really stop here. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is just one of those little side rules that I've tried to mention before. We don't really write expressions like this we, with the, the, the coefficient in the middle. We always like to rewrite it out to the side. So I'm gonna rewrite this one more time and see what we can do with it. So we have 12 r to the third times 16 r to the fifth, three, um, excuse me, s to the third power. So let's, we should notice a couple things. The first thing we should notice is that I have r uh, to the third being divided by r to the negative five. So I can go ahead and work that one out. So I can say r 12 times r to the third minus five because these things were dividing so I can just subtract the exponents over 16s to the third, okay? Well, when I simplify this, I get 12r to the negative two power over 16s to the third. I don't like this negative exponent, so I'm gonna move them back down in my denominator. A lot of moving. So I have 12 over 16r squared s to the third, all right? And we're almost done. Now we have to remember this is a fraction. So I've done everything I can with my exponents, but I can do one more thing with my 12 and my 16. If I look at it just like this, this is a fraction, and you should notice that I can divide a greatest common uh, factor out of this. My GCF would be four. And when I do, it changes that fraction to three over four, r square s to the third power. Wow, that was a lot of work for that little thing. But that's the way this goes. So notice how what we did, we started with the very top, we rearranged it and combined some things. So that's one way of doing it. I'm gonna show you one more way. Might be easier to you. So I'm gonna rewrite it. 12 s to the negative one times four to the negative two times r3 all over s squared times r to the fifth. Now, instead of getting rid of the negative exponents right off the bat, let's just go ahead and just do our subtractions of our exponents because we know we're dividing here. So this 12 stays where, right where it's at, and I have s to the negative one being subtracted by two, all right, because these two right here, these little sections are dividing, so I can subtract their exponents. And then I can say times four to the negative two times r to the third minus five, because these two are being divided, so I can subtract their exponents. Let's simplify what I have. 
I have 12s to the negative 3 times 4 to the negative 2 times r to the negative 2. Well, now that I've gotten all that, I just get rid of my negative exponents. My 12 stays on top. S to the negative 3 goes back into my denominator. My negative 4, uh, excuse me, 4 to the negative 2 goes into my denominator. And my r to the negative 2 also goes into my denominator. All right. Simplify again. I know that 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to put that over here at my coefficient. And then I have r squared times s to the third, all under 12. And just like last time, I can't do anything else with it. I can just simplify this fraction to 3 over 4 r squared s to the third. So that's a pretty complicated problem, but it's not too bad if you can remember your basic rule sets. All right. So lastly, we have number nine. So don't overthink this one. Notice that what's happening here, I have 1.64 times 10 to the negative 24 being divided by 3.7. Just simply do this. Divide these two things and then divide these two things and then you'll have, your, you'll have your answer simplified. And that's what I wanna leave you with with number nine. And if uh, you have any questions, I know this one might have seemed complicated. The, the rules are really easy. The rules are really easy. It's the application of them and how it gets to do it over and over again it gets a little confusing. But you know how to find me, ask questions, and I will see you in the next time. Bye bye